So how do you know if your diagnosis of small fiber neuropathy is actually real? Super important because so many of the autonomic cases that we see are diagnosed as neuropathic POTS because of small fiber neuropathy. But we have to take a few things into consideration and that's just how we diagnose it to start with. So for a lot of people, kind of the gold standard is you get a punch biopsy. But for people that have this particular type of problem, a punch biopsy is looking for the density of nerve fibers in your skin tissue, right? But we're not taking punches from all over your body. We tend to do one spot, maybe two, but it's usually just on one side. And then, so that brings up a whole nother problem of like, well, how do you differentiate if there is a problem on one side versus the other? We're kind of making the assumption that it's global or it's gonna be on both sides, but we don't really know. Also important part of that is the fact that the position you're in will matter. So a lot of times when we do sensory testing or we're looking at small fiber activity, we will look at people in an upright position, sitting up, usually sitting on the edge of a, of a, of a table at the bedside, and we will get one set of findings. So like maybe people will have low tolerance or low sensitivity to sharp, to pinwheel or pinprick, and they might have low sensitivity to temperature, like they, they can't really differentiate like a, a thing that's cold from a thing that's not. Like these are simple tests that we do. But then when we lay them down, sometimes that all normalizes again. Or we'll lay them down and we'll put their head in a different position and the neuropathy gets worse. Things start to go numb. We start to go into larger fibers. So while it's easy to do kind of like the algorithm thing, I think for a lot of people that experience this, we want to go like the step further and say, well, can we make it go away? Can we make it worse? Is it different from side to side? Is it different in patches? Or is it truly a length dependent neuropathy like we see in diabetes? Going that little extra question and just asking like, well, what else is going on question is super helpful because we'll find cases that have been diagnosed with a punch biopsy, small fiber neuropathy, neuropathic POTS, and we'll come to realize like that is there, but also when we lay them down, it changes the sensation. We move their head, it changes the sensation. We spin them in a circle or do a vestibular activity and all of a sudden they can feel their legs again, right? So we wanna know like not just the fact that this is a symptom and then like, hooray, you figured out a symptom, but like what do you actually do to fix it?